Hey, this is Rob with Home Tech Specialist, and today we're going to go over the wiring procedure for connecting an Omni panel to your smoke detectors. So your smoke detectors will alert you if they go off uh, remotely, you know, through your app or via phone message. Now, this is specific to these pieces of equipment. So if you have other equipment, this video may not apply to what you're doing. Specifically, I'm talking about Leviton Omni Panel and the Kita 120X Relay. I believe this will work with any Omni Panel, whether it be Omni 2, the Pro 2, the LTE, maybe even the LTE. And the smoke detectors would be specific to 120 volt, and this is versus a 12 volt. Usually 12 volt are powered by a security panel. And I would like to add that I'm sorry I didn't video this project when I did it initially. I had no idea how complex it was going to be. It took me a couple weeks and multiple tech calls to Leviton and Kitta. Wasn't getting a lot of help. Couldn't find much specific information on the internet. So when I was all done, then I kind of figured out I should do this video. So that's why I didn't film myself doing it, but I um, did the best I could to show you what I did. So let's just take a look at the wiring diagram here. So I made this flow chart for the wire connections. Now looking at the top here, you'll see those lines across the top. Those are the house wiring, black being the AC hot, white being the neutral, red being the interconnect or the in out, the IO. Sometimes they're labeled differently, but uh, they should all have that. And that's what makes all of the smoke detectors go off if one of them goes off. So that's the only way this is going to work, is if you have an interconnected AC smoke detector system, which most of them are these days. They're pretty much all interconnected. And then going down to the pink or salmon-colored box there, that's representing the Kita 120. You can see there's like seven wires coming out of there, and I've got them all color-coded as to what they should be coming out of the actual relay. And there in the center, you'll see the white ovals, and those are the connections, more or less, where a wire nut would go or some sort of sliding connection. Then over to the right, we have the smoke detector itself, and then below that is the, uh, that house icon is representing the Omni panel. So going down the colors, they're pretty self-explanatory. You're just going to hook, you know, black to black, white to white, red to red. You, they should all match up until you get down to the orange, which that is your normally open. That's why it's labeled as NO. And that is going to go to your positive on your Omni panel. So since we've got this diagram up, we'll just go ahead and start with the wiring process. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to switch off the breaker for that circuit that your smokes are running off of. You know, once you switch that off, I would definitely recommend testing the hot wire to make sure that it's off. You know, things can happen with DIY and other people, other contractors and stuff in there may have switched things around. You just never know. Just because it says it's off doesn't necessarily mean it's off. So test it. Then we are going to remove the smoke detector. Uh, there should be a harness that you can just unplug and take the smoke detector off. And then there's a mounting ring that's going to be left, and that's what the smoke was mounted on. So take that mounting ring, should be a couple screws, take that off as well, because we need access to the whole inside of the gang box. Once you've done that, go ahead and pull all the wires out so we can see everything. You should just have mainly your three, your black, white, and red, that should all be connected into the harness that your smoke is connected to. You'll need a wire from the Omni to this smoke detector. I would choose a smoke detector closest to your Omni system. If they're all interconnected, it doesn't matter which one you'd put it on. But you will need a wire, and you can use a standard, like a 22-2 or a 22-4, you know, 22 being the gauge of the wire, and we just need two conductors that we're going to use to make this connection. So looking at the diagram, the color coding is pretty self-explanatory, and you will have black to black, white to white, red to red. When you get to the orange and blue, that's what's going to hook into the panel. So we'll have the orange going to the positive and the blue going to the negative. The remaining yellow and gray, we are not going to use. You can clip those off and tape the ends. And that's all we need to do at this location. 
So the next thing is to go to the Omni panel. We're going to make the connections in the panel. Your wire that you ran, the 22-2, we're going to connect those to the zone contacts. Do not use zones one through four. So any zone five and above is fine. We're just going to connect the wires. And then we're going to use a 1K resistor to bridge between the positive and negative, as you can see here. Now your Omni panel should have come with a set of 1K resistors. They're commonly used. Here's what they look like if they came with your panel, or if not, you can order them online, or you might find them at a local electrical supply store. After that, we're going to go to PC Access on the computer. We're going to go to Setup, and then Zone, and you'll see a list of your zones there. We're going to go down and find the zone number that you're using, and change the type to Fire, and of course, label it. Now, all this can be done on the keypad if you don't have PC Access, but this is an easier way to do it. Once you've done this, go look at the status page. And what you're looking for is a loop reading on that zone for around 147. Sometimes it can be up or down from that, maybe one or two points, depending. The status should read as secure. If you get a trouble error during the wiring process, which is common, just go over to your keypad and hit the cancel button. That'll reset any errors you may have caused while you were wiring. So if your loop reading is good, we have no errors on the status, we should be done. You can test with the button on the smoke or you can get the spray smoke in the can. You need to make sure you're setting off that smoke detector for more than 15 seconds. If the smoke detector shuts off prior to the 15 seconds, the Omni will not trip its fire alarm. Actually time it. Make sure that the smoke is actually going off for 15 seconds, then the alarm should trip. If all that is working, then we're ready to put everything back. I found one of the harder parts of doing this was getting all the wiring and the relay back into the junction box. So do that carefully. You may even need to clip some excess wiring to make it all fit, but be careful not to make them too short if you ever have to get back in here to do anything else. After that, we're going to replace the mounting ring, reconnect the harness to the smoke, put the smoke back into the ring, and once it's up there and everything looks good, we're going to test it again and make sure that we didn't sever any of our connections while we were putting it back in. After that, we should be in good shape. I hope this has helped you guys out. If you have any questions, go ahead and comment below, and we'll see you next time.